सत्र ट्वेंटी टू तत्रापि न महात्मे ज्ञान विस्मृत्य पवाद इवन इन द खेस ऑफ द गोपीज वन कैन नॉट क्रिटिसाइज दैट दे वर नॉट अवेयर ऑफ द लोड्स डिवाइन पर्सनैलिटी द गोपीज वर कंडेम्ड एंड अक्यूज ऑफ हैविंग सेक्शुअल डिजायर्स फॉर कृष्ण एंड दे वर ऑल्सो ब्लेम्ड फॉर नॉट बींग कॉन्शियस ऑफ इज डिवाइन पर्सनैलिटी The women of Raj are criticized by those who are not able to view this love as anything other than sexual lust. Even King Parikshit, who listened to a discourse on the Shrimad Bhagavatam from Sage Shukdev, could not understand the depth of their love and questioned the orator. O oh sage, the gopis only thought of Krishna as their lover, not understanding that he is the ultimate reality. So how could these girls deluded by the threefold qualities of material existence become free Shrimad Bhagavatam 10.29.12 Sage Shukdev tried to clear King Parikshit's misunderstanding about the gopis by pointing out that what really mattered was the love the gopis felt for Lord Krishna and their constant meditation upon him Yet Parikshit was not able to understand this and raised his doubt again. This time, Shukdev said that divine beings should not be judged by human standards. Lord Krishna states in the Srimad Bhagavatam 10.22.26 For those who have offered their hearts and souls to me, their desires do not lead to further desire. just as grains dried under the sun and then cooked cannot germinate the gopis indeed were attracted to krishna in the mood of romantic love but this love should not be compared to material lust the desire became the highest form of love for the lord the shrimad bhagavatam 10.31.4 clears this doubt you are not only the son of yashoda but the indwelling witness in the hearts of all beings you are the one who brahma prayed for and now you have come in the dynasty of the yadus to save the world the yadus are descendants of king yadu those who do not understand the unconditional love of the gopis for the lord will misconstrue text describing the ras mandal as erotic and impure From the following Shrimad Bhagavatam verse 10.31.19 one can even misinterpret the virtuous mood of the gopis as lusty O beloved your lotus feet are so tender and our breasts are hard thus we place your feet on our breasts extremely gently fearing we may hurt them you are life itself for us The mere thought of your soft lotus feet walking bare on the path at night vulnerable to injury by sharp stones fills us with constant anxiety The amorous desire of the gopis in this quote is pure unconditional love It is an expression of love because the gopis were only concerned with pleasing the lord disregarding even their own pleasure One may propose that amorous love for the lord is sinful assuming that scripture will support such an assumption however nowhere in the scripture is amorous love for him prohibited there is no inherent problem with amorous desire for the lord and there is certainly no fault when amorous desire is combined with the feeling of being married to him bhakti sandarbh section 320 Sage Shukdev glorifies this feeling in the Shrimad Bhagavatam 10.90.27 Who can imagine what kind of austerities these women must have done These women who lovingly served the guru of the entire universe as their husband by massaging his feet and so forth In the scriptures one finds that even the great sages develop such feelings The sons of the fire god who were great souls performed austerities in order to attain female bodies and attained Krishna the birthless and omnipotent one as their husband 
Kurma Puran Amorous desire for the Lord, which leads one to consider him as one's lover, is also not sinful. The gopis themselves have addressed this point with the following words. O oh, beloved, you told us it is a woman's duty to serve her husband, children and family. That's true. So let us fulfill that duty by serving you, since you are the most dearly beloved, the most intimate relation, and the very self of all beings. Srimad Bhagavatam 10.29.32 Sage Shukdev also confirms the same in the Srimad Bhagavatam 10.33.36 He dwells in the souls of the gopis and their husbands, and within all beings. He is the indwelling witness and the true husband of all, and he has manifested his divine body in this world to enact his divine play. Even Lord Krishna confirmed the purity of the gopis' amorous love. Your love is completely pure and without fault. Srimad Bhagavatam 10.32.22 like the gopis, others have also attained this type of relation with the Lord, as mentioned in the Uttar Kand of the Padma Puran. The great sages, meditating in the Dandak forest, saw Lord Ram, an incarnation of Lord Krishna, when he came to visit the hermitages. When they saw his enchanting form, they desired him. Later, they attained female bodies and took birth in Gokul, where they attained the eternal Lord Krishna as their beloved. Gokul is a town near Vrindavan where Lord Krishna spent his early childhood. Therefore, this amorous passion of a woman for her lover appears even in men, and because it is directed towards a Lord, it is not material passion, encouraged by the material Cupid. Rather, it is completely spiritual because only the Lord, who is worshipped in the scriptures as the father of Cupid, arouses it. People who are carried away with their own understanding, the lusty nature of Rasmandal and the activities which took place there, fail to realize that the gopis did not see the Lord as an ordinary man, and they were never absent-minded about Lord Krishna's divine personality. Therefore, Love directed towards the purest object of love, Lord Krishna, cannot be lust. It can only be sacred love. <laughs>